everyone welcome back to our channel so for today's video we are going to do on Nabard so we're going to talk uh, a general overview about Nabard where its headquarters are and its functions all of that and also we're going to cover some of its current affairs the latest uh, initiatives and updates on the activities that Nabard has been doing right so and we'll cover it through MCQs and we'll try to solve them and we'll try to uh, bring out the important points which will be important for the exam, right? So my name is Sansa Nora Sama and I've been done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also completed my post graduation in nematology and agriculture, right? So guys, if you guys are new to this channel, so please uh, don't forget to subscribe and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications from our channel for the upcoming exams and you can also get a lot of content, uh, exam related content which will help you in preparing your exams. Uh, well, right? So if you guys have liked this session, uh, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button in the end of the video, okay? Alright, so now let's just talk uh, something uh, overview about Nabard. So uh, basically, I think all of you guys must be knowing that Nabard is a development bank which focuses primarily on the rural sector as well as in the agriculture field, right? So it is an apex in uh, banking institution uh, which provides the uh, finance for agriculture and as well as in the rural development okay so this is a branch of um, rbi okay so it was established on the recommendation of b siva raman uh, committee all right so it but it was by the act of by the act 61 of 1981 of the parliament and it was established on the year of 1982 on 12 july so guys these are uh, these facts that i'm jotting down out here these are very important from the exam point of view because a high chances of these type of questions coming this very static straightforward questions right oftentimes we uh, forget uh, to study all these but these are also very small uh, important um, data that uh, can has high chances of coming in the exam okay so uh, this was implemented they implemented the NABARD uh, the NABARD which is a national bank for rural agriculture and rural development act of 1981 right so basically the three functions of this RBI it's uh, of these three institutes of RBI okay the first one was this agriculture credit department and the second one was rural planning credit cell and the third one is the agriculture refinance and development corporations these were all these three institutes of RBI they were transferred to um, this NABARD okay so basically what this ACD which is the agriculture credit uh, depart uh, department they do is that they provide the uh, short-term refinance to the cooperatives okay and the another one the rural planning and the credit cell they uh, deal uh, majorly with the rural uh, regional rural banking okay and these uh, the last one which was in the agriculture refinance and development uh, corporations they basically um, uh, they work as a refinancing agency which provide a medium and a long-term agriculture credit to the support investment credits for the agriculture development right so these are the three institutes on the uh, rbi which is uh, which are transferred to nabart okay and some uh, uh this nabart the headquarters of nabart is in mumbai right i guess this uh, I think all of you guys will be knowing about this and um, some of the functions of this at NABARD is that uh, they, the main function is that they are mainly focused on the um, small industries, cottage industries as well as and the other such a village of the rural projects, okay? So they are mostly focused on the rural development as you can make, make it out from here. And some of the initiatives, these are uh, by the NABARD, they aim at building an empowerment and financially inclusive for especially for the rural India and they have a specific goal oriented departments right so these three departments can be subdivided into this financial uh, developmental as well as in the supervision okay and they provide more of like a finance refinance support for the rural infrastructure and they also have a credit plans for this rural development right and all of this uh, any uh, any activity or anything leading uh, to all these uh, loans and credits related to rural um, infrastructure to rural economy or rural development as well as for agriculture these are all this all comes under the part okay i hope this is clear right guys so um and let's move on to our next slide so we're gonna talk uh now we're gonna talk or focus more on the questions okay and these questions are taken from the latest updates or the activities done by the part in the recent uh, in this year right 
So the first question says that recently in the part they had provided a credit support for rural economy in the in the West Bengal, right? So we have to select the correct statement according to uh, the credit support which was provided by the part for West Bengal, okay? And the first statement says here is that uh, rupees two hundred and ninety two crore it was provided to West Bengal government for promoting micro irrigation schemes among the small and marginal farmers, right? So, and the second statement says a total of 1507 crore credit support was given to the state, okay? And the third statement said it will provide support to the farming sector for sustaining agriculture and allied operations during the post-harvest rubby crops and ongoing career season, all right? So, um, the uh, options given here are, guys, uh, number one is one only, number B, we have one and two only. Number three is a three only. Uh, number D says one and three only. And number E is all of the above. So guys, the right answer for this is one and a three only, right? So the statement number one and statement number three is correct and statement number two is wrong. And now let's look into the answer why the statement number two is wrong, okay? So uh, the first and foremost uh, that you guys need to remember here is that there's a Nabar Bank. Uh, they had provided a credit support of about 1,600 seven crore to West Bengal. So the statement before it says 1507, right? But the actual credit support given by Nabad is 1607, all right? So this, um, uh, so this is very important. So try to jot it down or try to remember it, okay? So this is especially a, a special liquidity support measure taken up by Nabart. And this is besides these banks, normal refinance schemes. So this makes it a a special liquidity support measure which is which aims to provide uh, for the pandemic as well as a lockdown as it has affected the rural economy uh, hugely so it's for that this is a special liquidity support measure taken up by Nabart right and uh, the uh, we can also see that a smooth credit flow will also provide support to this farming sector for the sustainable agriculture and the allied activities during the post harvest rubby crops and ongoing season and it was provided through state cooperative banks we have regional uh, regional rural banks and microfinance institutions so through this three cooperative banks, rural regional banks, and microfinance institutions, these financial institutions through these three things, they are going to uh, provide this credit, right? And uh, the last point here is that rupees around 292 crore, it was also provided to the West Bengal government. So for, it was mainly done for promoting the micro-irrigation schemes, right? So when we're talking about micro-irrigation schemes, what comes under micro-irrigation would be a sprinkler and a drip irrigation. But these are more of like a water-efficient schemes, right? So where you don't have to use a lot of water, so it's more of like an efficient way or method of using the irrigation, okay? So this will be highly for the small and marginal farmers, right? And this will be especially in the dry districts of the state, okay? So where there is a lesser rainfall, it means that where there's rates lesser rainfall, then this will be more focused for the small and marginal farmers in the uh, uh, dry districts. All right. And the last one here says that during the uh, current fiscal, the current uh, the center they had fixed the agriculture credit target at rupees six rupees fifteen lakh crore in addition to the expansion of the Nabart refinance scheme. Okay. So this statement is also very important. Okay. Try to remember this point. Okay, so these are something on the uh, measures or the initiatives taken by Nabat for Bengal, okay, in general. All right, so uh, let's, just, let's just go to another question. The question says here is that Nabat had recently launched a refinance scheme for financial institutions and banks, okay? So according to this statement, you have to select the incorrect answer. Okay, guys, so the statement number one says under the scheme, the primary agriculture credit societies are to be turned into a multi-service centers. Number second says the scheme will mainly focus on the watershed development projects. And number three statement says under this, around 5,000 PACs are to be upgraded in the initial phase and about 15,000 by the year of 2022 and another 15,000 by the year of 2023. Right guys, so this uh, the options given here are one only, number B is two only, number C is three only, 
number D says none of the above, and number E is all of the above. Okay, guys, uh, so the right answer for this is none of the above, as all of these statements are correct. Okay, now let us look into the answer why all the statements are correct. Okay, so this the BART Bank for Agriculture, so this National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, the BART, they actually launched a refining scheme for uh, financial institutions and banks. Okay, so did has allocated about 5,000 crores for this scheme, right? A total of about, this is the total outlay for this scheme. So they have a finance allocated about these 5,000 crores, okay? So this is important, guys. And now let us look into more about the scheme. So the highlights of the scheme says, under the scheme, the primary agriculture credit societies, okay? So these are also known as PACs, okay? And they are the building blocks of the country's cooperative banking, and they are to be turned into a multi-service centers, okay? So they'll be turned into a multi-service centers. Um, now, the, uh, so we're going to talk about this project. Is the scheme will be mainly focused on the watershed development uh, projects, all right? So, and these projects, these are uh, spread over 2.3 million hectares of watershed, tribal development, and ringfed areas. So, this is very important. This statement, okay, the, about this project. So, about 2.3 million hectares of watershed, tribal development, and ringfed areas are this project is spread across all of these areas, okay? And now, uh, let's look into the computerization of this. Packs. So they had launched a scheme to computerize the packs, which is the primary agriculture credit societies. Okay, so under this, around five thousand packs they are to be upgraded in the initial phase, right? And fifteen thousand by the year twenty twenty two and another 15,000 by the year 2023. Uh, okay, so these are something on the um, new refinance scheme and now let's let us look into another uh, slide where we're just going to talk more about it okay so what are the significance of these packs so these packs would also support the farmers in the post harvest as well as in the marketing activities all right and it also plays a very important or the major role in supply chain activities as they uh, by acting as spoke to the upcoming grooming agriculture uh, markets now when we look into this uh, grooming agriculture markets what are these grooming agriculture markets so these are a village uh, village level markets uh, we, these are spread all across in India right and these are like uh, there are about 23,000 rural agriculture markets in the country so I guess this point is also very important okay guys so I would like you all to remember this uh, 22,000 rural agriculture markets in the country right and these markets are all linked to ENAM right so I guess we all know about this ENAM, right? And we also have that this uh, organizations or this uh, rural market, they will definitely help the agriculture market sector and help farmers sell at the best price. So these are spread up all across the rural villages in India. So in this, since it's linked to the ENAM, then it will help organize and this will help in the agriculture market sector, especially right now since the market is a major one of the major problems in agriculture in uh, agriculture sector in India. So this will also help in uh, promoting the agriculture market and it will also definitely help the uh, farmers, right? And now let's move on to another question and let's, uh, who is the chief general manager of Nabard? okay? So guys, this is a very important question. It's about in the latest news. Um, number A is Ajibhanwala, number B is Saji Kevi, and number C is G.R. Chintala, number D we have P. Surya Kumar and number E says none of the above. Okay, so guys, right, the right answer for this is G.R. Chintala. So he is the new chief general manager for Nabart. It's not Banwala anymore. He was the chief general manager and the chairman. And now it's uh, this G.R. Chintala. So his uh, full name is Govinda Raju, uh, Rajulu Chintala. Okay, so he has been appointed as the uh, chairman for the Snapart uh, for Agriculture and Rural Development, right? So the appointment committee of the Union Cabinet, they also cleared that Chintala's appointment for two years, okay? And it will be till the uh, July 2022, okay? Another thing that you guys need to remember here is that the Cabinet Committee, they also cleared the appointments of the Bar Chief General Manager, PVS Sudha Kumar, as Deputy Manager, Managing Director, till his supernation in the July 2023, okay guys? So these are the things that you guys need to remember, small, small things which we think that we might not come, but these are also very important since if you guys are also preparing in this banking sector, then I think it's very important for you all to know who is the chairman of 
such and such okay so um okay so now let's go to another question uh, number fourth question says uh, how many watershed development projects are currently there under NABARD right so um for this uh question i would like you all to answer okay guys let me just read out the options so uh, think properly and if you guys have any guesses or if you guys have any ideas don't hesitate to drop in the comment section okay so the options given here are 3000 number b is 2150 and we also have c which says 1780 and number d is 240 and number e says 750 okay so out of these um options how many watershed developments are there under uh, Nabart currently, all right. So do command, uh, do drop it in the comments section. So um, a last question here is on the Net Ventures Fund, uh, the investment subsidiary of Agriculture and Rural Development. So this Net Ventures, it is an investment subsidiary, right? So it's one of the arm of Nabart. So uh, they invested for the first time in which of the following startups. Okay, so recently this Net Ventures, they had uh, invested. Uh, for the first time on a particular startup an agritech okay so which of these startups are the ones got invested by through by this um nap ventures right so the options given here are number a is j kisan we have number b kisan agritech number c is agri zone number d says uh farmers hub and number e is krishi take so um the right answer for this is j krishi so j krishi is a, a startup company all right, uh, it is an agritech. So this Net Ventures Fund, they, which is an investment subsidiary of agriculture, they uh, for the first time invested for on a Mumbai-based rural fintech startup, uh, which is Jake Sun. Okay, and so the investment it was a part of about rupees three thirty crore funding round. Okay, so it was about for thirty. Uh, rupees 30 crore funding round. So this is in collaboration with this Akram Ventures and Nep Ventures. So this startup is basically an agriculture focused lending startup, right? So it has raised about rupees 30 crore in equity rounded, which was led by this Akram Ventures as well as in the uh, Nep Ventures, okay? And this Akram, it is a new fund set up by the former executives of Helloin Venture Partners and it was uh, along with the Kalari Capital and whereas this net ventures it is an investment arm of this in the part right so um so these are something about the new startup and it was founded by this uh, uh, Arjun Ahuwalia and Adriel Manigo. So they had started this J Kisan. Until now, the J Kisan, they have around dispersed about 50,000 crore loans uh, in loans of the top tier credit quality to the diverse sets of around 5,500 plus borrowers from various income groups across 10 states. Okay, so these are some of the... Uh, the things that was on the news important points which i thought would be very important for the exam right so um guys i would like you all to remember all these points that you guys have learned today i hope it was clear and if you guys have any more doubts or if you guys want uh, any suggestions for the topics that we should take up in the future uh do comment in the comment section all right um all right so i hope this today was a fruitful day for you guys i hope it was productive i hope you guys had learned something new and uh that's all for today so we're going to meet again uh for tomorrow for with another topic so um please then if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications and if you have uh, like the uh, session with me do hit the thumbs up button and do share with your friends whoever's giving the exam so even they it will be a help for your friends as well thank you so much and we'll be meeting for the next session